<laughs> Hello and good morning. Welcome to Facebook Live. Uh, I tried yesterday to record this so that I could be on the road as I'm going to be a little bit later. Uh, so I'm on early today. So today we look at Exodus 19 and 20. And tomorrow we'll look at 21 and 22. Um, but in, in chapter 19, it starts out with, it says, In the third month, the children of Israel. So it was three months that they had been journeying uh, since they had left Egypt and wandering in the wilderness. And, and all of these things that happened in those three months, you know, the, the manna, the quail, the water, the complaining, and, and all of that stuff. And in this chapter, in, in verse 3, then it says, uh, in the Okay, they came to the wilderness of Sinai, by Mount Sinai. And that's um, an important and significant place to be as we think about Mount Sinai in the Israelites' history. But Moses went up before God, and, uh, and the Lord said to him that this is what you should tell the people of Israel, that I, you know, just remind them that they've seen what I've done to the Egyptians and how I bore you, how I carried you, how I provided for you in all of these things. And I brought you to myself, and he says, Now therefore you shall keep my vo obey my voice and keep my covenant, and you will be a special treasure to me. I mean, God has chosen this Israelite nation to be his people for a special blessing, and they continually, you know, fall away. Anyway, um, so Moses then came to the people and spoke these words and said to the people that... Um, you know what God had said, you know, that I, I've taken you to be mine, I'm going to provide for you, uh, and I, I ask you to keep my covenant and obey my edicts, you know, and they all say, we will do that. You know, in, in verse uh, 8, you know, it says, the Israelites say, they answer all together, all the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought this promise back to God from the people, you know, we will do what you have said. And then the Lord says, Behold, I, I come to you in the thick clouds so that the people may hear when I speak to you and believe you forever. So God has been speaking to Moses, and, and now he's saying, you know, I'm going to come to all the people so that the people can hear. And, and God says, I want you to go and, and have the people prepare for this day when I come. And they need to sanctify themselves and sanctify means to to set apart to make holy and that's what you know we are sanctified and forgiven in Jesus Christ we are made holy for God that way so the the people are to prepare themselves for coming into the presence of God and I remember you know when I was growing up I mean we didn't have communion very often at worship you know at church maybe three or four times a year and and my parents would prepare for that. I mean, this was before I had to have communion, for sure, before I was confirmed in eighth grade. But my parents would go and talk with the pastor. You know, they would have a time of confession, of preparation. And often in our worship services today, we, we do that same thing. We'll have confession and forgiveness. Um, but anyway, we prepare to come to God. And so this is what God is saying to, the, to Moses, to have the Israelites prepare themselves, set themselves apart, to be holy for me. So Moses goes and he tells the people all of this and and how they are to um, prepare for this. And and God says that I'm gonna come on a mountain and I'm gonna be it's gonna be a bunch of thunder, it's gonna be a bunch of fire and smoke and, and the trumpets are gonna blow. And when the trumpets all blow, the people will hear my voice. And but None of the people can come up on the mountain because if anybody comes up on the mountain, you know, they're going to surely die. It is just, you know, that is forbidden. They cannot come up on Mount Sinai. And so the, the time passes and, and all of this happens, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the Lord descended upon the mountain in fire. It said its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain shook greatly. It trembled. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. And then it says, the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. So God came down to the top of the mountain and invited Moses to come up to the top of the mountain. And he said, go again and warn the people. Tell them, don't come on the mountain. You'll stay back. And Moses says, they're already afraid. They're not getting anywhere close. You know, but, you know, and Moses says, the people cannot come because you warned them. 
and said, set bones around the mountain and consecrate it. To consecrate means to set apart for God as well, to be holy. And that's the words of institution when we have communion, consecrate the bread and the wine. It, 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 it's God's words, you know, given to us, Jesus' words given to us. So to consecrate again is to set apart for God, to make holy. So the mountain, Mount Sinai, is consecrated and made holy for God. And then it says, you know, the last verse of if, chapter 19, so Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. And then verse 20, or chapter 20 starts, and then God spoke all these words saying, and this is the God giving the Ten Commandments. You know, as we as we read and as we study and as we teach, we'll, we talk about the, these Ten Commandments as being Moses' Ten Commandments. Well, they're not Moses' commandments, they're God's commandments. God's words spoken directly to the people and to you and to me. These are the, the things that God is saying, you know, just as in chapter 19, he says, tell the people to obey and to live as I tell them. This is what God is telling them to do, how to live, you know. And so we have the, the Ten Commandments given. And, and sometimes, I mean, as Protestants, we mostly talk about the first three commandments, talking about our relationship with God, you know, with I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Um, I mean, I guess the first two that I did are the first commandment. And then, you know, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God's name in vain. And then the other seven commandments deal with how we relate to each other. Uh, other other denominations will have the first four commandments. You know, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And then remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. There's sometimes that those are the first four commandments. But regardless, these are God's rules for us. They're not just guidelines. They're not suggestions. These are rules. These are laws. You shall not kill. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You know, you shall... You know, you know, honor your father and your mother. These are the ways that we are to live. And in in Jeremiah 31, you know, verses 31 to 34, God says to the prophet Jeremiah, I will write my word upon their heart. And we know these things. I mean, they're written in us and through us. And so God gives the Ten Commandments. And in verse 18 of chapter 20, it says, Now all the people witnessed the thunder, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, the mountain smoking. And when they saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. And then they said to Moses, You talk to God. And then when God talks to you, then you come and talk to us. We don't want to, we, you know, this is terrifying. And, and you know, they, the people didn't want to be that close to God. And and part of that, you know, comes through the, the the fear of the Lord. It's the the fear, the respect, the the awesomeness of God, that in all of those different things. And and so Moses says, "Do not fear. Don't be afraid, for God has come to test you, that that His fear may be before you, but so that you won't sin." I mean, this is why God comes. I mean, we we see the awesome power of God. In, in the plagues that came to Egypt, in the way he led the Israelites and the provided for the Israelites. And, and we see this awesome power and might. And to think about that Mount Sinai, the, the fire, the smoke, the thunder, the, the whole earth quaking that way is just reflecting, showing us the power of God. And the last thing that we look at today is, is the law of the altar. Um, God says to Moses, you know, build an altar to prepare your sacrifices upon. They would sacrifice, you know, the, the sheep, whatever, you know, the, to build an altar. But not to build this altar out of hewn rocks. You know, don't cut the rocks. Don't build this permanent structure. Don't build anything that you're going to climb up on or anything. But make this altar just from the earth or just from a pile of, of stones that you pick up. Don't, you know, he says, this is what I want you to do is just make a plain and simple altar. And he says, if, you know, do not build it out of hewn stone, for if you use your tool upon it, you know, it, it will not be holy. It will be profaned. So God says, you know, when you worship me, just come as you are. You don't have, we don't need super fancy churches, although we've got them. I mean, it's nice to have a church building, but it doesn't need to be super ornate and all of those things. I mean, we have a place to gather to worship God, and, and we come uh, 
plain and simply to God who we are, where we are, with what we have. And, and we don't need to um, put on false airs and everything that way when we come to God. But we just come to God um, as we are, and we try our best to follow the laws that God has given to us. Um, tomorrow morning, hopefully I'll be about on time. Uh, we'll look again, as I said, at Exodus 21 and 22. God bless you richly today.